the 1st of July. Hong Kong celebrates a new beginning. As the British move out, the Chinese move in, and the red flag rises. This is the CBS Evening News. With Dan Rather reporting tonight from Hong Kong. The midnight transfer of power was celebrated with fireworks over Hong Kong's harbor. Now an open gateway to the world's most populous nation and the world's only still rising communist power. Good evening. In the rain here on the other side of the world, dawn is already rising on a new day for Hong Kong, the first day of Chinese rule after more than 150 years as the easternmost jewel of the British Empire. In the end, it all came down to a somber military ceremony, then a quick retreat. For the Chinese, it was an historic triumph. For the British, a time to bite those famous upper lips. The Royal Yacht Britannia sailed out of Hong Kong Harbor early this morning, carrying Prince Charles and the colony's last governor. Their departure followed a brief, simple ceremony in which Hong Kong ceases to be part of the British Empire. Prince Charles said farewell and made a promise. We shall not forget you, and we shall watch with the closest interest as you embark on this new era of your remarkable history. No! Oh! The handover was symbolized by the change in flags. First, the British flag was lowered. Then, just a few seconds after midnight, the Chinese flag was hoisted. After a century and a half, Hong Kong belonged again to China. It didn't take long for the new leaders of Hong Kong to show who's boss. The first signal from China, a display of raw military power. The power it has used to suppress individual expression on the mainland. CBS News correspondent Barry Peterson watched as the Chinese troops came marching, rolling in. Hong Kong woke up to its first day as part of China with thousands of troops moving in. Not the best signal, say Western diplomats, said the Chinese. It's really none of your business. Last night, throughout China and for invited guests only in Tiananmen Square, Chinese watched as the passing of a single second changed their history. All night, all over Hong Kong, it was out with the old British symbols dumped, in with the new Chinese symbols rising. But pro-democracy demonstrators did not go quietly into the night. At one protest, a Chinese leader portrayed as a murderer for human rights violations. This would never be allowed in China. Long live democracy! Long live democracy! Demonstrators even took to the balcony at the legislature elected under British rule. Now it's out of business under Chinese. Why is it that our leaders in China will not give us more democracy? Why must they take away the modest democracy that we have fought so hard to win? Across town, the new legislature, handpicked by Beijing and elected by nobody, took office. The British governor was replaced by a chief executive. The eyes of the world are on us. We are confident that we will rise to the challenge and build a brighter and better future. Britain's downtown military headquarters was turned over lock, stock, and flagpole. The People's Liberation Army strutting its stuff as soon as the British turned their backs. The PLA's top general told his men, do everything according to the law. And then he said, make the people of Hong Kong love you. Translation, don't do anything that would make Hong Kong believe this Chinese army is some sort of army of occupation. And with everyone watching, this embarrassing moment, a Chinese troop truck breaks down. Bad luck or a bad omen? Will communist rule stall a city that's always cruised in the fast lane? Barry Peterson, CBS News, Hong Kong, 
China. Representing the United States at the handover was Secretary of State Madeleine Albright. She told us today that the U.S. is concerned about the Chinese show of military force, but expects Beijing to live up to its promises. The Chinese have committed themselves to protecting the way of life of Hong Kong, which is uh, democracy, civil liberties, uh, rule of law, and uh, a free market system. But it's going to be a story that unfolds over quite a long time. It's not something that we can tell uh, today in a snapshot, but it is something that we're going to watch. And because America has interests here, we're going to be very vigilant. As for the former British rulers, they're gone this morning, but hardly forgotten. CBS News correspondent Bob Simon covered the retreat. All right! The sun did not set on the British Empire today as had been advertised. It never came up. It rained all day and all night. Prince Charles and Governor Patton got soaked at the farewell ceremony, the last purely British occasion on this last day of British rule. And the troops? It may have rained on their parade, but they didn't miss a step. Who but the British can make a retreat look like a triumphal march? Who else can bow to the inevitable, standing so upright with such grace and panache? For the last couple of days, people in Hong Kong couldn't get enough of them. The people who, according to Beijing, were overjoyed to see them leave, wouldn't let them leave without one more snapshot. On Stonecutters Island this morning, soldiers of the Black Watch Royal Highland Regiment were bussed to ferries where they began chugging their way back to Scotland. Glad to be going home. What soldier isn't? And yet. It's a great sadness. Uh, I've had a wonderful four years here and uh, just sad to be going. But all good things come to an end, as you guys know. In Vietnam, the last Americans turned the lights off. In Hong Kong today, the British closed the gates. It was a bit more decorous than our departure from Saigon, but the essence of it wasn't all that different. It was the handing over of a country to a tough communist regime. And this time, the first time ever, not a single shot was fired. Governor Patton seemed overwhelmed by sadness as he said goodbye to his household staff this afternoon. He made three tours of the driveway before leaving, a Chinese superstition indicating a desire to return. If he does, it will be as a tourist. Just before the flag came down by the Prince of Wales barracks, the prince had a few words for the incoming rulers from Beijing. Britain learnt long ago that Hong Kong people know best what is good for Hong Kong. We have no doubt that Hong Kong people can run Hong Kong, as the joint declaration promises. Out with the old, in with the new. The British marched off to old Ang Syne as the Chinese were coming in with armor. And then the prince and the governor boarded the Britannia and sailed off into the night. Just before leaving, Patton sent a short cable to London. It read, I have relinquished the administration of this government. God save the Queen. Bob Simon, CBS News, Hong Kong. An editor's note. Hong Kong was a British colony for 156 years, but in some ways today, it looks more like an American colony. Right now, there are 37,000 Americans living in Hong Kong, compared with 22,000 British citizens. Many of the Brits will be following their flag home, but the vast majority of Americans here are staying on, working for more than 1,000 U.S. companies. Straight ahead, Paul Azan in New York will have some of the day's other top stories, including President Clinton's new ideas to cut federal taxes and how that could affect you. The aftermath of the Saturday night fight in the Tyson Holyfield boxing debacle. New questions about the Persian Gulf War and the performance of high-tech U.S. weapons. And then later in the broadcast, I'll take you for a ride on China's new Orient Express as the CBS Evening News brings you the pomp, pageantry, and politics of this historic day in Hong Kong. All right! Stop! Out! The Army... Why?
Why does Tums work so fast and Pepsid AC work so much slower? Because they work on heartburn in totally different ways. Tums Calcium naturally, rapidly neutralizes acid, so it works fast. Pepsid AC's Famotidine has to travel through your bloodstream to block natural acid production, so it takes at least 40 minutes. So, why does Tums work so fast and cost so little, and Pepsid AC works so much slower and costs so much? Maybe they charge by the hour. Tum, tum, tum. The good news about eggs is piling up. Recently, the results of 224 studies conducted among 8,000 participants over the past 25 years were compiled by researchers at the University of Arizona. The conclusion? If you're healthy, enjoy your eggs. Your cholesterol probably will stay about the same. To get all viewpoints about eggs and cholesterol, talk to your doctor. The incredible edible egg. Air, powerful pain relief and so much more. I switched to Polygrip free from another adhesive because it's free of artificial flavors and colors and it's strong. It holds well. I eat an apple a day with my Polygrip free and I don't have to cut it up. I bite into it. No problem. Good evening from New York. Boxer Mike Tyson apologized today for taking a bite out of the ear of his opponent, Evander Holyfield, in a Saturday melee inside and outside the ring. Among other things, Tyson may have to put $3 million of his fight money where his mouth was. But that's just a small bite out of his $30 million take. Anthony Mason has the latest. Evander, I'm sorry. Mike Tyson apologized today to the boxer he bit to the sport he embarrassed, and to the public he shocked. I was wrong, and I expect to pay the price like a man. But boxing officials like promoter Bob Arum already agree that price should be high. Well, I certainly think he should be suspended for a period of two or three years and then not allowed back into the ring until he has a psychiatric evaluation. I think he's blown the first two rounds. And uh, he better get started. Tyson was behind going into the third round Saturday night when he opened his mouth and sank his teeth into Evander Holyfield's right ear. Now here's Mike. Keep, keep your eye on Mike. See, Mike has just... See, look at him. You can see it. You can see it. There it is. The champion reeled in agony. Referee Mills Lane had already deducted points from Tyson for a first bite. Now look, he bit him again. And he said, it's a punch. He said, don't give me that crap, man. You beat him. I said, that's it. You're gone. The Nevada Boxing Commission immediately suspended Tyson pending a disciplinary hearing tomorrow. The commission got to do their job and they got to stand up for the game of boxing. The commission could revoke Tyson's license. They're holding his $30 million purse, but the most they can fine him is 10% of it, or $3 million. I'm willing to accept what I have coming to me. But no apology may be enough to heal the wound Tyson has inflicted on himself. The fight billboard came down in Vegas today. Mike Tyson's career may be coming down with it. Anthony Mason, CBS News, New York. In other news, up in orbit, the one American and two Russians aboard the crippled space station Mir finally got their lights, oxygen, and automatic steering systems back up and running today. They are also rehearsing techniques to repair Mir, damaged in last week's collision with a supply ship. Heavy damage and a huge fireball in suburban Mexico City today. It happened when a truck loaded with natural gas collided with a train it was trying to outrun. At least five people were injured. This year, you will find something you never thought possible. It's big, really big. So ask your doctor about prescription Zyrtec. Zyrtec! Or call toll free to see how this prescription medicine may help you. Hey, what's your name? Um, Jim. Well, I'm um, Jim. I don't mean to be personal, but could that beamer of yours electronically optimize its handling if it detects an excessive rate of yaw that could result in a loss of control? I don't think so. Bummer. 
Seville STS with Stabilitrack, so advanced it can actually steer you back on track if you start to lose control. Bye-bye, I'm Jim. Yo? When you have heartburn and pain, these won't give you complete relief. Problems this bad need Alka-Seltzer, the only one with effervescent power to speed relief, plus the medicines to relieve all your symptoms. Alka-Seltzer, the 100% solution. The total effect, it's when all the pieces come together. And for me, it starts with Total. Of all the leading cereals, only Total has 100% of 10 essential vitamins and minerals. Because putting 100% in here could have a total effect on what you do out there. Get the total effect. Your retirement plans, Social Security, pensions, investments. Can you maintain your current standard of living? Our experts tell you what you need to know to retire smart. Tomorrow on This Morning. President Clinton weighed in today with his version of a tax cut plan. He said he disagrees with key parts of the tax cut bills passed by the House and Senate because they give too many breaks to the wealthy and not enough to middle-income Americans. White House correspondent Rita Braver has more. President Clinton said the tax cut bills passed by the Republican-led Congress contain many good elements, but he didn't talk much about those. Instead, he attacked the congressional plans for catering to the rich. They direct far too little relief to the middle class. They include time bomb tax cuts that threaten to explode the deficit. Among the biggest differences, the president would allow Americans to shield about 30 percent of capital gains from taxes. The congressional plans would shield about 50 percent. And the president opposes the plan passed by the House that would allow taxpayers to subtract the effects of inflation when calculating capital gains. The president would allow more generous tax credits for education, a $1,500 per year credit for the first two years of college and a 20 percent tuition tax credit for later years for lower and middle income students. Both the president and Congress want a $500 per child tax credit for most families, but only Mr. Clinton wants it extended to the working poor who don't pay income tax. Despite the differences, however, the president refused to set out any specific items that would result in a veto. And both he and Republicans in Congress were insisting they can pass a tax bill together. Rita Braver, CBS News at the White House. Just ahead, Benedict Arnold's gunboat, seen for the first time since it sank to the bottom of a lake two centuries ago. We're almost ready. Go get the cones. Your favorite, roughage. Don't put up with over-frozen ice cream. Maytag's exclusive new dual-cool refrigerator keeps its cool perfectly, so you can keep yours. Another great idea from Maytag, the dependability people. Hey, sweetie, want to try something different? New A1 Sweet and Tangy. The sizzle starts here. This year, you will find something you never thought possible. It's big. Really big. So ask your doctor about prescription Zyrtec. Or call toll-free to see how this prescription medicine may help you. Loser buys. Ooh, this elbow. I have Advil right here. Dad? I try to leave. Can't take more of this for hours. Even if your arthritis pain comes back. It's back. Well, next time. Advil. Then you'll be buying lunch. <laughs> Advanced medicine for pain. Do you ever just have one of those days? Well, at Farmers Insurance, everything we do is about getting things back to normal. Isn't that what insurance is supposed to do? Farmers, get you back where you belong. How far would you go to save your child? This mother is on a desperate search. Will she find him? Find out on 48 Hours Thursday. 
U.S. government investigators today shot down some of the glowing performance reviews originally given to U.S. smart bombs, stealth fighters, and other high-tech military gear used during the Persian Gulf War. David Martin has our report. The videotapes of laser-guided bombs scoring pinpoint hits are among the most lasting images of the Gulf War. But the report by the General Accounting Office says many of the Pentagon's claims about their performance were overstated, misleading, inconsistent, or unverifiable. The question of how well these weapons performed in the Gulf War is important because the Pentagon has based much of its strategy for fighting future battles around the performance of precision-guided munitions. The precision weapons did a phenomenal job in the war, and we anticipate they will do so in the future. Pentagon claimed bombs dropped by the highly touted F-117 stealth fighter hit 80% of their targets. But the report says the real chance of an F-117 hitting the mark was between 40 and 60%. Whatever the exact number, Elliot Cohen, who conducted his own study of the air war, insists precision-guided weapons were vastly superior to old-fashioned dumb bombs. Precision-guided weapons were, in fact, a real revolution. They opened up the possibility of hitting targets which you simply could not have hit with so-called dumb munitions. The Pentagon admits some of its claims at the time were exaggerated. But the weapons revolution is here to stay. David Martin, CBS News, the Pentagon. War history of another sort today. An underwater video camera has discovered this revolutionary war gunboat commanded by Benedict Arnold before he turned traitor for the British. The ship is almost intact on the bottom of Lake Champlain along the New York-Vermont border. The ship's cannon is still mounted on the bow, the 50-foot mast still standing. And that is the news from New York tonight. I'm Paula Zahn. In a moment, we're going to be going back to Dan Rather in Hong Kong for a look at China as you've never seen it before. I'm 62. Can I still help prevent osteoporosis? It's never too late for Caltrate. Caltrate Plus has the extra calcium you need, plus six nutrients essential for healthy bones, whatever your age. It's never too late for Caltrate. You know, meat's a dog's natural food. Meat's what they love. So that's why I feed mine Pedigree, the number one meat dog food in America. It's 100% complete and balanced and keeps them in great shape. Pedigree, developed with vets, recommended by top breeders. Trusting the wrong diarrhea medicine uh -oh. can put you in a very uncomfortable position. But you can count on Imodium AD to stop diarrhea, often in one dose. You could end up taking dose after dose after dose of the pink stuff to stop diarrhea as effectively as Imodium AD. Mm. Don't take chances with diarrhea. You should have taken Imodium AD. Take Imodium AD. Sorry. One dose relief you can count on. This year, you will find something you never thought possible. It's big. Really big. So ask your doctor about prescription Zyrtec. Or call toll-free to see how this prescription medicine may help you. The good news about eggs is piling up. Recently, the results of 224 studies conducted among 8,000 participants over the past 25 years were compiled by researchers at the University of Arizona. The conclusion? If you're healthy, enjoy your eggs. Your cholesterol probably will stay about the same. To get all viewpoints about eggs and cholesterol, talk to your doctor. The incredible edible egg. A treaty, words on a piece of paper, officially made Hong Kong part of China again tonight. But the Chinese have long been working on a more solid and tangible link, one forged of steel. It's a new railroad that runs between Beijing and Hong Kong, two very different worlds, now one. Every evening, not far from Tiananmen Square, the pace begins to quicken. It's time to board China's newest attraction, the Beijing to Hong Kong Express. Where's the top speed? 
Our engineer, 34-year-old Leojin Lee, says the train is ready to roar down the line at speeds well over 100 miles an hour. Is it safe at that speed? No problem. Guarantees, no problem. No problem, okay. It's 9.30 at night. The train will travel south from the capital city through the heart of eastern China, through towns and villages that outsiders seldom see. We have booked overnight passage in the so-called soft sleeper section of the train. We'll soon see what that means. Hello. This train carries over 1,100 passengers. Only 36 can ride in the first class soft sleeper section. Now this is the hard sleeper area. A lot less privacy, a little less room. You get a lot of instruction on this train. No smoking, no drinking, no drinking games. Don't think about laughing off the prohibitions. There are plenty of railway cops on board. Back in the soft sleep section, the train ladies are delivering tea. And greetings. While passengers do their best to sleep, the train rolls on through the night. Breakfast time. Bowls of steaming rice porridge for the Chinese. Scrambled eggs, too. The man who negotiated Hong Kong's return, Paramount leader Deng Xiaoping, had dreamed of taking this train to Hong Kong before he died. It's 10.30 uh, in the morning. The train's been rolling for 13 hours. This is our first stop of any real duration. It's in the city of Fuyang which is in the middle of a tremendous agricultural area, sort of the combined Kansas and Iowa of China. There's also something of a building boom here in Fuyang. Americans and Chinese are in a joint project to sell animal feed. And the biggest duck processing factory in China now provides jobs to 6,000 workers along the train route. The train runs more than 1,500 miles through seven of China's provinces the cost to build, $5 billion, will be more than offset by increased commerce with Hong Kong. But this train route was designed for more than just trade. One of the most important stops is Jing Gangshan, a town that played a significant role in the communist drive to power. Chairman Mao slept here. Now it's a tourist attraction. Stop, take a stroll, try on a Mao suit. Tomorrow, the Hong Kong Express takes us deep into the countryside, where people are poor and few can read or write. You will see a part of the world that in many ways has changed little in a thousand years. China's weakness, its vast interior. Hong Kong is one of the keys to developing that interior. So it is central to China's long-range goal of becoming both an economic and military superpower. And today, the Chinese got it. They now have Hong Kong. They own it. They run it. That is why China's leaders view victory in Hong Kong as perhaps the most important triumph for Chinese communism in the last half of the 20th century. Until tomorrow's train ride, Dan Rather reporting for the CBS Evening News from Hong Kong. Good night. News.